Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Blue White Spirits, a deck that received a bunch of new additions in Jumpstart, including Rattle Chains, a 2 mana 2 1 spirit with Flash and Flying, and when Rattle Chains enters the battlefield, target spirit gains Hexproof until end of turn, so this can save one of our spirits from a spot removal spell. And then afterwards we can cast spirit spells as though they had flash. So all of a sudden it becomes much easier to keep up mana to potentially play a counter spell. And if we don't have to play counter, we can just play another spirit end of turn. Makes it easier not to overextend into any sweeper effects as well. So great addition for the archetype. And another addition is Nebelgast Herald, 3 mana, 2 1 spirit with flash and flying. And whenever the Herald or another spirit enters the battlefield under our control, we can tap target creature and opponent controls. So this makes it very difficult for the opponent to race us, since we can just tap down their largest attacker over and over again. Plays very well with other flash creatures, like the Rattle Chains and the Spectral Sailor. So those all synergize quite well with the Heralds, so we can play them in the opponent's turn and still tap down an attacker. But of course we can also use it to get rid of any blockers that might be able to block our spirits. And then another new addition is Essence Flux. Trying out two copies here, one mana instant that exiles target creature we control and returns it to the battlefield. So this can potentially re-enable any enter the battlefield ability, which is useful with both our Rattle Chains and our Nebel Gas Herald. But we can also use it to save a creature from a removal spell, and then if that creature is a spirit, it also gets a plus on plus one counter. So a lot of potential uses for just a one mana card. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, what are some of the other incentives to play an All Spirits deck? Well, we've got the full playset of Supreme Phantom, 2 mana 1 3, with flying giving other spirits we control plus 1 plus 1, so a nice cheap lord. And then at 3 mana we've got Empyrean Eagle, giving other creatures we control with flying plus 1 plus 1, and a bird spirit itself, so another anthem effect to pump up our team. Shackle Geist from M21, 2 mana 2 2 spirit with flying, can only block creatures with flying, but then can tap 2 untapped spirits we control to tap target creature we don't control, so this alongside our Nebel Gas Herald makes it very difficult for the opponent to attack or block us. We can just tap our smallest spirits to then tap the opponent's largest creatures while we try and raise them. So we don't really need much removal when we can just tap the opponent's creatures down over and over again. And then finally, of course, Spectral Sailor, the great 1-mana spirit with flash and flying. And for 4-mana we can draw a card, so it gives us a nice mana sink in case we're flooding out. So those are all the spirits in the deck. Then rounding out our deck, we've got some interaction with 4 copies of Unsummon as a cheap bounce effect. I do prefer Unsummon over Stern Dismissal, which can also bounce enchantments, because we can use Unsummon on our own creature, which is something we can do with Stern Dismissal. So sometimes in response to a sweeper effect, for instance, we can Unsummon our most valuable creature, and potentially even replay it in the same turn if it had flash. And then we could also consider Silent Departure, which is a bounce effect for one mana at sorcery speed, which can also be flashed back. But again, we've got the issue that we can't use it to save our creature from removal. And especially now facing all those goblin decks, it's important to be able to unsummon one of the haste givers like the Goblin Warchief or Chieftain when they hit it with uh, Muxus, so they can't attack with all their goblins in the same turn. So I settled on four unsummons. Then we've got four copies of Opt as another cheap cantrip that can help smooth out our draws, helps us play 22 lands so we don't flood out too much. And then finally we've got the full playset of Lofty Denial, a 2 mana instant that counters target spell unless its controller pays 1, but if we control a creature with flying, we can counter it unless the opponent pays 4 instead. So a great counter spell to have in a spirits deck, and of course great to hold up alongside Rattle Chains and or Herald. I did have Spell Pierce in the deck as well, but with the popularity of the Goblin decks, which don't play any non-creature spells, I ended up cutting it. And yeah, that's pretty much the entire deck. We've got 4 Unclaimed Territory in the mana base. This can help us with the mana fixing for Empyrean Eagle, which is the only white card in the deck. Maybe one day we'll get some other white spirits, who knows. And then we've got 4 Hallowed Fountain, 4 Glacial Fortress, 10 Islands. Could also consider playing a couple Castle Ventress, but I haven't found it to be necessary, especially when we've got mana sinks like Spectral Sailor. So the mana base is nice and smooth, we don't have to take any damage except for Hallowed Fountain. So that's one of the advantages of this two-color deck, is that we're only splashing a little bit of white, and we're almost a mono-blue deck otherwise. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, with a fine opening hand. 
could keep up unsummon at the cost of two life in case my opponent has a an elf they want to play on turn one. It's going to be a Skirk Prospector instead, so up against the goblins. Yeah, I'll probably just play Rattle Chains here. Interesting attack. I would be okay trading a Rattle Chains for a Prospector, I think. Although, with two Lords, maybe I shouldn't. But it's definitely a risky attack from their part, since we could have had any number of Flash creatures that ambush the Prospector. And Prospector is definitely an important piece of the Goblin deck here. Now we can flash in our other spirits, thanks to the rattle chains. But uh, drawing lofty denial means we definitely want to keep up all our mana here. Although well, lofty denial sometimes can be uh, paid for thanks to the prospector just making a bunch of mana. Best case scenario, opponent just sacks all their goblins to play Muxus. And yeah, there it is. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, sometimes you gotta go for it, but it doesn't always work out. On to the next one. We're on the play with a pretty good hand. No counter spells, but powerful curve of spirits. Having a Spectral Sailor on turn 1 definitely makes a big difference when it comes to our damage output, especially when we have some Lords in hand like Supreme Phantom and Imperial Eagle. Opponent on blue-green. They seem to be holding some zero mana cards, so that plus a blue-green land leads me to believe they're on a Song of Creation combo deck. So finding a Lofty Denial to counter the enchantment is going to be pretty important. It's going to be a gross spiral. Well, Opt could technically find a Lofty Denial. So if our opponent goes for the combo, I probably Opt. And then uh, if they don't go for it, I can just Herald and then play Eagle next turn. Right, there's Emery, so yeah, they're definitely a Song of Creation deck. We'll let Emery resolve. Probably still play the Heralds over casting Opts. Another Herald, so... Yeah, I can't really stop my opponent unless the Opt finds a Lofty Denial. But then we should have lethal next turn if they don't go for it. Emery gets back chamber sentry. If they're casting sentry for three, that's great. So they should be dead now. And that's the advantage of all these flash creatures. The opponent doesn't know exactly how fast we're going to kill them. So they thought they could maybe buy themselves an extra turn. Harold can tap down Ornithopter. And Eagle should seal the deal. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Play Fortress first, since it's going to come into play tapped. 
And then turn two we get to keep up Rattle Chains and Denial. Gifted Aetherborn. Not what we wanted to see on the other side since it's kind of difficult to race. Can maybe tap it down with our Herald and Shackle guys later. So either Mono Black Devotion or Vampires here. Silver Smote Ghoul. Yeah, don't really want to counter that one. Another land that comes into play tapped, unfortunately. Could try and trade Rattle Chains for the Aetherborn by playing the Phantom, although it does potentially run into a removal spell, which would be pretty bad. I think I still try and race. And then if we hit a land 4 and can double spell or 2 drops, that's going to be great. Yeah, Surin can't resolve here. It's great with the ghoul being able to sacrifice it and deal 3 damage over and over. So once again we've got options. I think I like hitting for 2 and then we can maybe play the heralds and the sailor to tap down both attackers. Since we don't have another counter spell for Surin. Time to deliver the beatdowns. And then Shacklegeists can be flashed in and I can tap down the Aetherborn. Unless the Phantom gets removed here. Shackle guys gets removed instead. And now I can start activating Sailor. Let's see, your opponent's at 15. We'll pay two life. Send in Sailor and Rattle Chains. And then I can flash in a Shackle Geists to tap down the Aetherborn again as well as drawing with the Sailor, which I maybe should do first. Another Aetherborn. Alright, so if I draw into another Lord, we can win the game right now. I guess it uh, doesn't hurt to try. Alright, there it is. GG's. Sweet, so we beat some mono blank vampires. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hands. Four lands is a bit much, but we've got Spectral Sailor as a nice mana sink. Facing Yurion, so potentially Field of the Dead. And I'll go Rattle Chains into Phantom. Wall of Blossoms, alright, so it's maybe something different. Yep, 
Yeah, I guess we'll just play the Phantom main phase. At least the Wall of Blossoms is not going to do much blocking in this matchup. Gilded Goose, on the other hand, can hold off the Supreme Phantom. Don't really want to bounce it, though. It is a risky block on their part. If we have another Supreme Phantom in hand, we could kill the Goose. Thanks to the Flash on Rattle Chains, of course. We'll pass, can draw with Sailor end of turn. And a Ravenous Chupacabra. Okay. Could let it go. I think I'm okay letting the Phantom die. I'm just so likely to find another Lords within the next couple draws. I guess I should have played the Eagle at instant speed to ambush the Goose. So your opponent might be playing an Emil Flicker deck, which explains some of their card choices. Tulsimir, that's fine, so we can just unsummon the token here. They still gain the life. But then I can unsummon the goose, and then we should have seven in the air to kill them. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand facing an Omori deck. We'll see whether it's all creatures or all enchantments. Those are typically the two types of Omori decks you encounter. Alright, so it's just a goblins deck playing Omori. We'll see whether or not. The two life from all the shock lands or check lands will hurt him. I do need to try and find a lofty denial as soon as possible to counter the key goblins. I'm definitely fine trading Spectral Sailor for Prospector. Although, we do have an Imperian Eagle in hand, so keeping the spirits, which will get buffed, is an option too. Yeah, I guess I'll take it. Alright, there's Lofty Denial. I can probably afford to still tap out for Empyrean Eagle here. Since my opponent doesn't have a Haste Granter in play, so if they play Cranko it's not too bad. Although I guess they can play Muxus. Muxus would be pretty bad. Is that a risk I'm willing to take? Could also go Shackle Geist, keep up and summon. But I think we need to get this eagle out there. And it's gonna be a goblin matron. Alright. So dodge the bullet here. Gets Muxus for next turn, but then we'll have our Lofty Denial ready. And Nablegast is not a great pickup.
opponent goes for Chieftain instead of Muxus. Fair enough. Well, if they don't kill any of my spirits, Harold would present lethal next turn. So maybe that's uh, even better for us. Instigator. Sure. Now they can still make mana with the Skirk Prospector, of course. This would not be a lethal attack. But just in case they play something second main phase, I should probably play the Herald now to prevent two damage. Tap down something random. Their opponent hits for eight. And what do they have? Second main. Chain Warlord doesn't do it, has to be the Jump Palm Incinerator, basically. Or they can try their luck with Muxus, sacrificing everything. Alright, opponent plays Muxus anyway. But, um. Uh, yeah, that's probably going to leave them without many options. They did hit Krenko plus a haste enabler, so if they still have something in hand, they could cast it thanks to all the mana from uh, Krenko here. Well, now we've got Lofty Denial up, although it's unlikely to do us much good here. Don't think using Unsummon is going to help. Alright, sweet. So, very close game here against another Goblins deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine opening hand. Could use one of our Lords to pump up the Sailors. Ooh, opponents with a green ley line. So Lofty Denial is going to have a pretty fast expiration date. Although, try him on turn one. Randall Chain's another nice pickup. Definitely countering a mana creature here. It's gonna slow them down significantly. And then I could opt to try and hit my land drop, that's probably worth it. Still have access to rattle chains. Opponent might suspect another counter spell instead, so they might play around it. So that's also one of the advantages of playing all these flash creatures. And her opponent passes. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna jam Empyrean Eagle. I don't think my opponent's playing any sweeper effects. I guess I can attack first and then play it. And I could always unsummon one of my uh, creatures in case they do have a sweeper. But typically, Leyline of Abundance doesn't go too well with Sweeper Effects. Put on Cycling Titanothorax, so maybe they're trying to reanimate stuff, in which case Unsummon's gonna be great. Another Paradise Druids and the Lunar Elves. There's no way I can have lethal here. Not enough mana to draw into a lord and play it. Alright, let's see what they can do. They do have access to a lot of mana. Could have considered casting on summon on the elves to maybe prevent like an Ugin from being cast. But then I still have the option of unsummoning my own creature. Ok, 
Kenrith, that's fine. They don't have the white mana to gain life. So it's not doing much here. And a Gilded Goose and her opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. Facing turn one forests. A red green Huntmaster, so opponent on a dinosaur deck. Yeah, and summon's probably good enough. Next turn we get to keep up Lofty plus Rattle Chains. Ribjar Raptor. I think I let that resolve and then flash in Rattle Chains. And then next turn I can maybe tap something down with Nebelgasts or just unsummon. Hit for two. See what they play, maybe tap it down with Heralds, and then once we have Herald in play, it's much easier to keep their stuff tapped down. Domri's ambush. I guess and summon it works out pretty nicely here. And then we can still play Shacklegeist. Another Domri's Ambush. Yeah. I guess. I'll just play the Shacklegeist and let it happen. And then we'll hit for two. Maybe I'm supposed to go Shacklegeist plus keep up uh, Lofty this turn instead of Herald, since we can no longer play the set instant speed since we lost the Rattle Chains. The Regisaur will get countered. Alright, great time to draw Supreme Phantom. Hit for six. And then I think I like the upkeep Herald to tap down the Huntmaster. Although I guess the Huntmaster has a passive mana ability. So it's not like an actual mana creature that they need to tap for mana to get a discount. But it looks like they're dead anyway. Yeah, definitely should have held the Heralds. And then we can even use this ability end of turn. Alright, sweet. Spirit speeding dinosaurs. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine opening hands. Bit of interaction with Unsummon, and then Rattle Chains into a couple Eagles. That's the fancy Godzilla sleeve. Up against the Sultai deck, Field of Ruin, Explore, so this looks like a Field of the Dead deck. Opponent could be playing Shatter the Sky. Yeah, I'll hold on to the Eagle for now. Migration Path. 
Let's see what colors they get. No double whites. Ah, we'll play eagle. Yeah, I don't think I'm playing around stuff. Hit for seven. So that one point of missed damage by not playing eagle could make the difference. Another migration path. And an Uro to gain a bit of life. Alright, so the one damage did not end up mattering. Bushuka Bog. Exiles my graveyard. Ooh, Phantom. Don't think that gives me a lethal. Let's see, 10 or 1 short, so I guess the 1 damage did matter. Yeah, this time I will hold it, because it doesn't speed up our clock by playing it. And then we can just go end of turn Rattle Chains Phantom and kill them through a sweeper. Can also unsummon one of my creatures. Golos is fine. Zombies usually have a hard time blocking spirits. And yeah, opponent sees the writing on the wall and scoops it up. Typically the Field of the Dead matchup is pretty good for us. Just gotta have maybe a one Lofty Denial to counter a Shatter the Sky if they happen to run those. But uh, yeah, Spirits, definitely a decent option in the historic metagame. Having a few cheap counter spells to counter goblins like Moxus is pretty important, otherwise they provide too much advantage when they enter the battlefield, so removing them afterwards isn't the best solution. But then we do have the Shackle Geists and the Nebelgast Heralds to potentially still help us if there's a race going on where we need to tap down some creatures, as we were able to uh, see in the Vampire matchup. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.